Hi, my name's Max, and I'm a docent for the Friends of the Elephant Seals. We're located on the central coast of California in San Simeon, up at the Piedras Blancas Elephant Seal Rookery. Today, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about one of the elephant seals' amazing adaptations, and that's their blubber. What is blubber? Well, blubber is a very thick layer of fat that the elephant seals have that keeps them warm. You see, the elephant seals were almost hunted to extinction back in the late 1800s because of that blubber. The Mexican government realized that there were probably less than 100 seals left on a small island off of the coast of Baja, California by the name of Guadalupe Island. At that time, they sent guards out there to prevent hunters from killing the seals. Because of this early effort and the efforts of the United States later on, we now have over 200,000 northern elephant seals living today. So, what's so special about their blubber? Well, like I said, it's an adaptation that they have and it's used in a couple of different ways. First, when they're on land, their blubber is used for nutrition. Elephant seals don't eat when they're on land. They're fasting, so they need to get their energy from somewhere. So, they get that energy from their blubber. However, that blubber also makes them very warm when they're on the beach. You'll often see seals flipping sand in order to cool themselves off. Another way that blubber is important to elephant seals is for their deep dives. Elephant seals are the deepest divers of all the pinnipeds. Pinnipeds are your seals, sea lions, and walruses. They can dive a mile deep. That's more than 5,000 feet. The deeper you go, the further away from the sun you get, the colder it gets. The blubber is actually used to keep them warm. They're able to stay much warmer and able to regulate their temperature by having that thick layer of blubber. Without it, they would freeze down there just like we would. Today, I'd like to actually show you how to make a simulation of blubber so that you can check out and see how blubber will actually help keep you warm. What you're going to need is you're going to need four large, Ziploc type baggies. You're going to need duct tape. You're going to need Crisco vegetable shortening. And I'm gonna actually show you how to assemble the blubber gloves and then how to check out how that works. So one more item that would be helpful is to have some sort of a wide container that you can actually put your bag into while you're loading your Crisco. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take one of your bags and you're going to fold it over about halfway so that the point of this is to keep the vegetable shortening away from the edges of the bag because you're going to need to be taping it later and if it gets vegetable shortening on it, it will be too slimy for the tape to hold. So you're going to put this into your container. So here's the container and I put the bag inside so that I can now open the bag up and put my Crisco inside of the bag. So I am going to put two of these smaller cans of Crisco, if you can find the larger size cans, you can just get one, into the bag and I'm going to fill it all the way to the top. And when I mean the top, it's the top where I've already put the bag, the, where the bag is already halved. So we're gonna fill it up and just scoop it out with a spatula and make sure that you just get it all in there and make sure that you are not getting it anywhere near the top of the bag. So here I have it. You can see it's a little bit overflowing in here, but that's all good when we pull the bag up. So next thing is to make sure my hands do not have any more Crisco on them because that will make it so that my duct tape will not stick and I'm ready to pull this bag up out of the container. So I'm going to pull it up, but I wanna make sure that I don't get any of the Crisco on the top part of the bag. So I'm... So I pull the bag out and I make sure that I kind of just shake the Crisco to the bottom. Now I take one of my other bags and I also open it up. I'm going to stick my hand inside the bag 
and I'm going to push that bag all the way down through the Crisco. So I'm actually pushing my hand down through the Crisco. And now I'm almost done. The last thing to do is I'm going to tape these two bags together with the duct tape. So you're gonna to wanna to cut your duct tape in about 10 to 12 inch pieces. And you are going to take the two bags, the one that's inside, the one that's on the outside, and you're going to tape them together. So you're going to put it along the edge, on the outside, fold it over to the inside so that the two bags are now starting to get taped together. And I'm gonna keep going around doing that with my duct tape, overlapping just a little bit. So I'm overlapping where I already was. Sometimes this is a little easier if you have a second person to hold it for you, but you're gonna go around, fold it over. So now we are almost all the way around. We're gonna do one more section. So that was three pieces of tape. I'm gonna stick it here on the outside and then fold it over onto the inside. And now you're gonna probably wanna do at least one more round of this to make sure that you've got a good seal and that no water will be able to get in. So I'm just gonna go back around it one more time, placing the duct tape on the outside and rolling it over into the inside to make sure my bags are attached and that they are becoming waterproof. So I use about six pieces of 10 to 12 inch duct tape in order to get a really nice seal here. And then one more piece. And we should be pretty good to go at this point with the bag ready to be dispersed into water. So here's what we have. It's completely um, sealed up here. The vegetable shortening is not where I'm, it's not touching me, it's inside the other bag. So I can get the feeling of this being like blubber. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make another bag with two bags that will not have any blubber in it so that I can do a comparison. So our scientific experiment here is going to be the only difference between our two gloves is gonna be one will have blubber in it and the other glove will not. So I'm going to just stick one bag inside the other and I'm gonna do the same thing with the duct tape around the top to make sure that no water will get inside. So I have two bags here and I'm gonna tape them together. So I've gone ahead and I've taped these two bags together and this will be my control and this bag with my blubber in it is my variable. The variable being just the blubber, the only difference between the two bags. So I now have a bag in this hand and a bag in this hand, and I'm going to put both of my hands, I'm making a fist so that I can get my hands all the way down into this bucket of water that I have prepared. It's ice water. You wanna put some ice in it or frozen water bottles or something that makes the water nice and cold. And then I'm going to put both into the water at the same time and I'm gonna to try to determine whether or not the blubber actually keeps my right hand warmer than my left. And here I go. And in fact, I don't feel any cold at all on the right side, and I definitely feel the cold water on the left. So that's an example of how blubber helps keep elephant seals warm when they dive in the very deep ocean. Hope you'll are able to give this a try and see for yourself. Also hope to see you sometime soon up at Piedras Blancas Elephant Seal Rookery. Have a great day.